here's the subject of my next video I've got this Graham Farish tank engine and we're going to convert it to DCC first job is to remove the body and I believe on most of these locos it's the same you just take the front bolt out There we go. Let's put. I'm going to use the original box to try and keep everything safe. And either the box or the lid from the box. So, 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 on the advice of a very useful guide I found online, I've made a nut which is going to pretend is effectively pretending to be the body of the loco now this means that I'll be able to keep the loco screwed together whilst I'm doing the conversion also means that I'll be able to test the loco without the body on it all I did was just chopped up a bit of old uh, credit card and drilled a little hole through it and then screwed the original body screw into it it also means that I'm not going to lose the couplers and the axles aren't going to fall out next up is to prise off the upper bush clip and then under there you can see there's a spring and the brush. Next up I just undid sorry, this screw here which released this nut so in turn I could remove the wire that holds the upper bush clip in place. Again, it's going to safely in my plastic pot. As I'm sure you can imagine, getting a decoder in this locomotive is a very tight squeeze. I'm just test fitting it at the minute. This is why you've got all these long leads here. And if you look carefully, you can see the decoder fits in the top of the cab. It does mean it's a bit of a shame because you'll be able to see the decoder when it's done. But on the plus side, I'm not going to have to machine away any of the bodywork. I just need to work, make sure that I'm going to be able to reassemble this with the decoder in this position. By unscrewing this screw and holding on to the nut, you can remove the um, base plate and axle holder. And you need to do this to get it at the lower bush clip. You can also see from here how the pickup system on these works. You've got the, I don't know, let's call them brushes, which rub on the inside of each wheel, the left and right hand side. Those two layers are isolated. One layer is connected to the rest of the loco via the screw and the nut and the other side of the locomotive is connected via this top plate touching this portion of the body so something like so the connection between them there and then this bolt here. Those are the two bits which I need to make sure I connect to with the decoder. So it's easy enough to make a connection to this bolt. To make a connection to the lower pickup I'm actually going to connect it onto this stub of a lead at the back here. If you 
you can see that that leak just there. Let's see if I can zoom in. So this stub of a lead just here, I suspect once upon a time it had the smoothing capacitor on the back, but it's uh, not there now. I bought this lo loco second hand, so it was probably removed previous to this. But you can understand now why you need the digi hat, because at the minute, all of this chassis is connected together which is fine when you're running DC, but DCC you need to disconnect this brush here with the uh, with this side, these wheels. So I bought the DigiHat conversion kit and all that is is it replaces the bronze brush on the inside of there and also supplies with some heat shrink which separates this clip from the chassis. So the first step is to carefully remove the clip. And I've just got to make sure I don't lose the spring and the, bu the brush as I remove this. Okay. So let's have a look at what we've got here. Right, that's the original brass hat, and that's what's going to be replaced by the digi hat. This is the old brush that's come off, and that's what's been rubbing against the motor armature. There's plenty of that left, so we're going to reuse that. And then this spring is what connects that brush. The spring connects the brush to the clip. Now this clip, we're going to solder, I think, the orange wire from the decoder to it. But to try and make life slightly easier to for ourselves, I'm going to cut a small length of the orange decoder wire off and solder that on first, and then come back and solder the two leads together later. So although it's soldered on and it looks okay, I don't think the uh, wire is quite in the groove it needs to be in. So I'm going to try again. Okay, so there's the clip made with the small wire on it and then the next thing to do is to apply the heat shrink. So to apply the heat sink, heat shrink sorry, Oops. use the tweezers to point, uh, just to make it extra easy it is clear so you can't really see it but the heat shrink covers the new solder joint and down the sides. This is to make sure that this clip doesn't make any connection to the rest of the locomotive. Similarly, another bit of heat shrink is slid over this side. Now I'm just going to use a 
hot air blast to put that heat shrink on, but you could use side of a side of a soldering iron or a lighter. So I've now installed the I should have shown this, sorry. The Digi Hat brush is in there, the original carbon brush has gone in with the spring and then the modified brush clip has gone in. An important check to do now is with the multimeter to check for continuity between the chassis and the orange wire. If there's any continuity there we've got a problem. And there is not at all. That's good news. Before reinstalling the top brush holder, hopefully you can see on the end there, I've added a small wire washer. And the reason for that is if you don't add this little washer, find my thumbnail there, the brush holder would touch the commutator. Now when it's in, I push down, the commutator is clear of the brush holder. And with that in place, we can reinstall the brush, the brush spring and the brush clip on top. Okay, that's dropped in there. I'm trying to make sure the original curve that was worn in it uh, is matched up again so we get the best contact we can. So now we have all of this reassembled, we're going to have the orange wire from the decoder going to the lower clip. I need to check, I think the grey wire goes to the top one, it will connect to this one. Then this is a this little stub here is a chassis. One of the chassis mounts, so that'll be to one of the wheel sides, and then the bolt that comes through here will be the other, so I think it's the black and the red from the decoder. To make this easier to fit, I have now desoldered the yellow, white and blue leads from this decoder because I only need the four that are left. So I've now got the decoder soldered in place, orange wires joined up, red wire to the back, black wire that will be hooked onto the bolt and the grey wire bolted over where the old grey one was. Now it's time just to put it all back together. So I've got everything reassembled now, apart from putting the body shell back on. And what I'm going to do is put it on a test track first to see if it runs before I put the body back on. As you can see, we're getting some uh, positive test running now. A 
the minute it seems to run better forwards than it does backwards, but the more I run it, the better it gets anyway. Hopefully you can see then that the locomotive is now running and running well with its new DCC Dakota. I think it still needs a bit of bedding in and I shall uh, leave it running for a little while. 